Hello everyone, this is Jinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So I have some horrible, horrible news. I have unearthed a dark, dark secret Capcom hid within Iceborne that never meant to see the light of day. It turns out I may have been wrong. Last night I discovered while messing around with some meme builds that there is actually possibly a better longsword than the Gold Rathian in some situations. What's this, Jinx? You just put out a 30 minute video essay talking about why Gold Rathian longsword is good? And now you're telling me there's a better longsword? Now I need to f. Yes, there is apparently a possible contender that beats it, and I'm sorry if I can't stop laughing because I cannot actually believe this. I'm gonna stop beating around the bush and just cut to the chase. The contender for best new longsword is... I can't believe I'm saying this. The Zora Magdaros longsword. Yes, I am not shitting with you. You heard it here first, the only longsword that potentially might compete with the Gold Rathian in certain matchups is the Zora longsword. It is entirely possible for this to beat the Gold Rathian longsword if you play cleanly on a lot of matchups with caveats, but we'll get to that. It turns out the Zora Magdros longsword with Handicraft 5 gets 20 units of purple and 20 units of white. Now, 20 units of purple is enough to kill a monster if you play cleanly. And the raw meta set does put you at 2 blast attack as a side effect skill, which puts you at 540 blast without a status augment and 570 with one status augment. More on that in a second. Now, outside of the fact that this is the fucking Zora Magdros longsword, the main reason why we never really considered this before was because of the negative affinity. But as it turns out, out, the Zora Magdaros Longsword is able to do custom augments, meaning that with 5 affinity custom augments and 2 affinity augments with a status up augment, you can hit 0% affinity. And if you still want to run a health augment, even though this doesn't run a peak set because EI slashes do take chip damage, if you have Agitator 5, you still hit 100% affinity while monsters are agitated if you have negative 5% affinity. This does mean you don't get to run that status attack up, but to be honest, the only reason we're using that augment on the double affinity setup is because we have one point left over and the other choice is a defense augment. But how strong is the contender for this new best longsword? Well, let's look at the build. Unsurprisingly, this runs the exact same template meta set as all the previous meta sets did. Now, this does require the most god decos out of every single one of the meta sets. You're going to need an attack plus deco and two challenger plus decos to make this work, or if you have two handicraft plus decos, you can run the agitator charm instead. Now, if you don't run a health augment and run double affinity augment, you can get away with only one agitator in this build because you'll still hit 100% affinity. Now, let's talk about why this might compete with Gold Rathian. So, first off, this is not a peak performance dependent build. Peak performance has a questionable uptime on longsword depending on matchup because your EI slashes do take chip damage. And especially on tempered monster chip damage, you may not heal up all of it with the actual EI spirit slash itself. Now, this is not normally a concern for comparison points because every single endgame meta longsword set except for the Shara does run peak performance, so they all have the same issues with that. And the Gold Rathian beats the Shara simply because the poison makes up the damage difference from peak uptime loss. But Zora Magdros has Blast. Now Blast is actually fairly strong in Master Rank, the only reason we haven't been using Blast on any sets is because all of the Blast weapons have really terrible raw. That is, except for the Zora Magdaros Longsword. Now, we didn't consider this before because the negative 20% affinity is a balancer for its raw and the purple sharpness. However, as we just discussed with affinity augments and affinity custom augments, you can make it 0%. And at 280 true raw, this is 10 less than the gold Rathian, but it does also get purple sharpness. Unfortunately though, we do have to run a purple sharpness build on this because you need handicraft to even hit white and you only get 20 units of white. So there is no reason to run a peak build with white sharpness on this because it doesn't have natural white sharpness. In terms of raw damage, we're looking at this being similar to Shara, just minus non-elemental boost and plus blast. So let's just take a look at the EFR this can hit. So in purple sharpness on softened weak points, you hit 723.91 EFR. Now we are going to be using the double affinity augment setup for this calculation. However, if you use health augment instead for the second augment, you will still get the same EFR on softened weak points. Now for non-softened weak points, our EFR is looking to be 692.89. Now ideally, you want to avoid dipping into white sharpness, but just to see what the EFR looks like in white sharpness, on softened weak points, it's 687.46. 
and on non-sovereign weak points, it's 657.99. Now, if we compare the EFR of that to the optimal Gold Rathian Peak set without even accounting for the difference between Poison and Blast, the Gold Rathian in Peak has 2.37% more EFR on softened weak points. While compared to Gold Wrath without Peak Active, the Zora Magros is 2.82% higher on softened weak points. This means at least for the sake of softened weak points, if you are hitting about 55% or less peak uptime on your Gold Rathian set, the Zora Magros has higher EFR on average. Now, once the Zora Magros hits White Sharpness, which we want to avoid, it is going to be significantly weaker than the Gold Rathian in terms of EFR. So, realistically speaking, the Gold Rathian is looking much stronger in terms of EFR, even with shaky peak uptime. But we haven't yet accounted for blast damage. So, let's do the same thing we did for Poison in the previous videos and look at how much percentage of health damage blast actually does to monsters, because we can directly correlate that to a percent increase in EFR. Now, I do want to make a correction because we were using 19,000 as a higher end Master Rank Monster HP because that's around what Silver Rathless and Tigrex get. But BTB Broad did mention in the comments that those numbers are incorrect based on their testing. Now, because I have not seen the testing data or footage, I cannot vouch for the numbers in the comments. But we did do our own independent testing, which is the footage you see in the background. Our good friend Arati did a Sticky 3 Light Bowgun run against Uragan in the Master Rank Arena. Now, Sticky runs are especially easy to count damage for because all you have to do is count how many Stickies hit and make sure you account for things like Enrage, Modifiers, and Agitator. Because each Sticky is going to be doing the same damage aside from Enrage and Agitator Modifiers, you have a much easier time counting damage. I went through and totaled up every single one of the stickies of each different damage amount, as well as all the wyvern blasts, all the status ammo plinks, and even the two damage per sticky plink when they land on the monster, plus dragonazer and the sleep rock. This totals to 27,552. Pretty safe to say that this is 27,500 because the last hit to kill the Uragun was a sticky 2 that dealt 95 damage. Now, this is an N equals 1 test, and monsters are known, at least in high rank and low rank, to have HP variants in the same quest. Now, we would need a lot more testing rounds in order to get any kind of accurate data on the HP rolls monsters can have. But in high rank, we have data mined all of this information from the PC version, and we know that Uragun has higher HP than every Elder Dragon except for Valhazak and Xenojiva. So, at least for the moment, 2700 is a good high point to set for higher end of HP. So, with this 2700, let's take a revisit to Poison. Now, after talking to a few different testers as well as speedrunners, it seems like a standard amount in a speedrun for Poison procs is 3 per hunt. Now, speedrunners do have very high damage uptime, and Poison gets worse the more damage uptime you have, so for us mere mortals, 4 per hunt is a more realistic number. Now, despite going up to 2700 from 1900, this pretty much doesn't change any of the statements about when Gold Rathian is strong, because these all still cover EFR differences it might have. So, for 3 stars, this is 7.7%, for 2 star, this is 4.74%, and for 1 star, this is 2.37%. Now let's take a look at Blast. So at 300 damage per Blast in Master Rank with 27,000 HP, we're looking at a 1.11 repeating percent per Blast. Now for the fun part comparing these two together. So in order for the Zenora Magdaros Longsword to beat the Gold Rathian, you have to have its total damage from Blast procs be higher than the total damage of the EFR difference plus the Poison proc damage. So let's start with the three poison procs you would get in a very clean run. So the total difference for a three star is 8.16%, with a 1.11 repeating per blast proc, this is 7.34 blasts, or in other words, 8 blasts to beat. Now the blast for a 2 star monster is going to be 5.34 blasts. Obviously we can't get partial blasts, so you have to get at least 6 blasts per hunt. And then for the 1 star monsters, you have to get 3.74 or 4 blasts to beat. Now for the 4 poison proc runs, which is what us mere mortals are looking at. So for 3 star monsters, you need 9.08 blasts to beat. This will be either 9 or 10, just depending on Gold Rathian's peak uptime. And then for 2 star monsters, you need 6.4, so 7 blasts to beat. And for 1 star monsters, you need 4.28 blasts so 5 total blasts during the hunt to beat. And here comes the caveat I mentioned earlier. I have no f***ing idea how many blasts you can reasonably get with this weapon on a monster. I have put 8 to 12 hours a day into producing a video a day ever since Iceborne came out, so I have really barely gotten to play the game. I hit MR73 like 3 days ago and I haven't played since. So I don't have the Znora Magdros Longsword and I have no idea how reasonable it is to get 5 blasts on a 1 star week to poison monster. 
Now, depending on your augment loadout, the Zora Magdras Longsword will be able to have either 54 or 57 true status. The Gold Rathian Longsword gets 42 true poison. Plus, poison thresholds are almost always higher than they are for Blast, plus you cannot apply more poison while a monster is poisoned, so theoretically Blast should easily be able to get 5 Blast procs on a 1 star to poison monster. But I can say nothing definitively because I have never used this weapon. And another issue is when you are not clean with this weapon, you struggle a lot more compared to the Gold Rathian. This comparison assumes that we have 100% peak uptime on the Gold Rathian weapon and we have 100% purple uptime on the Zora weapon. But not everyone can play this clean. For one thing, you've only got that 20 units of purple sharpness, and when you hit white sharpness, your damage just gets dumpstered. And I mean really dumpstered. We're talking 7.8 to 10% less damage than Gold Rathian with peak active. Although when Gold Rathian doesn't have peak active, we're talking about a 2.42% gain and a 4.56 on non-softened weak points. Interestingly, this is effectively the same damage gain that Gold Rathian with peak has over Znora when it has purple sharpness. What this means is that if the peak uptime on Golden Rathian is equal to the purple sharpness uptime on Znora, this is no longer a factor. So if you have 50% peak uptime and 50% purple uptime, then neither gets an edge in terms of damage. At least relative to the fact that Gold Rathian with peak is still 2.37% stronger than Znora with purple. Roughly. It's a bit more complicated than that, but we're just going to simplify it to this for the sake of these calculations. Now, we're just going to assume that peak and purple uptime remain equivalent because if we don't, this gets ridiculously complicated. Alright, now we need one more thing to get a realistic comparison between these two weapons. And that is accounting for hitting non-softened weak points. The Gold Rathian weapon, due to its higher natural affinity and higher affinity in the build, does hit harder when not hitting softened weak points. And it is simply unrealistic to expect you to only hit softened weak points. So let's just go ahead and say that 25% of the time you hit non-softened weak points and 75% of the time you hit softened weak points. At least to me, that sounds like a pretty good standard for distribution of weak point hits. Now, the Gold Rathian Longsword does hit harder by 2.37% on softened weak points and 4.5% on non-softened weak points. At an uptime of 75% for softened weak points and 25% for non-softened weak points, that's a 2.9% total EFR increase on average over the hunt. Cool, now we can input this 2.9% increase in EFR into our old calculations. So fortunately, it looks like most of the values did not change. For 3 procs with 3 stars, it's still going to be 8 blasts to beat. It's still going to be 6 for 2. However, 1 star does require 5 now to beat. As for the 4 poison procs, the 3 star still does require 10 to beat it. It still requires 6 in order to beat the 2 star, and it's still 5 to beat the 1 star. So yeah, there you have it. As long as you have as much purple uptime as you would have peak uptime using the Golden Rathian Longsword, if you have a clean hunt and only have 3 poison procs with the Gold Rathian Longsword, then it only takes you either 6 or 5 blast procs to beat it, depending on whether it's a 2 or 1 star monster. And that's a 2 or 1 star monster to poison. Now, if you can get a 4 poison proc run against a monster, then the blasts you need to beat it are either 7 or 5, depending on 2 or 1 star. And again, that's 2 or 1 star to poison. Now, the 5 procs per run sound fairly realistic to me for the 1 star monsters, which means this might be the meta longsword to use against those. But again, I have not tested this. I do not know how many blast procs you can realistically get against monsters in master rank. On paper, it has the potential to beat the gold Rathian in certain matchups, but again, needs playtesting. And like I mentioned earlier, because of how fragile that 20 units of purple sharpness is, you do have to play the Zora Longsword much more cleanly than you could with the Gold Rathian. The Gold Rathian Longsword can get away with very, very sloppy hunts because it has so much affinity and because it has so much white sharpness. Also, one final note, I have only looked at the Zora Longsword. I have no idea if any of the other Zora weapons could be considered meta. The Zora weapons are a little weird because all of the different ones from different weapon types have different affinity, can or cannot use custom augments and various other things. So please note that this recommendation of Zora possibly being meta against certain matchups is only only for Longsword right now. I cannot definitively say anything about any other Zoro weapons until I actually crunch the math. But yeah, that's all I got for you on this one. 
I can't believe I'm actually recommending a Zora weapon. Thanks as always for checking out the video. If you have any friends you know who'd be interested in learning about the new potential Zora meta, be sure to share the video with them. And if you are in as much disbelief as I am about this whole thing, be sure to like the video and let me know in the comment below. Thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with. And also a thank you to BTP Prod who did point out that in the previous past few videos we were using incorrect health values for our status calculations. And also a huge thank you to Arati who did record this sticky Oregon run so that I could count correct health values. And if you want to join the community and talk to us about how weird the idea of the Zora meta is, check out our Discord server, the Mathalos Nest. Just make sure to talk about it in our Iceborne specific channels so the PC players can avoid spoilers. Of course, we also do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and various memes that we make. And Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. Also, he'll be at TwitchCon this weekend, live streaming the whole thing, so definitely go check him out during this weekend. And of course, we would not be where we are today without the generosity of our patrons. No new patrons today, but regardless, thank you all so much for the support, because it has carried us through the content drought to Iceborne, and well, here we are. Seriously, it means so much, so thank you again. Okay, that is all I got for you. I still cannot believe that Zora might be meta, but either way, we will have new videos out for you guys very soon. We've been trying to keep to this roughly one video a day thing for the past few weeks, so be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and that way YouTube will tell you the moment any of our new videos go out, which should be tomorrow. Alright, happy hunting hunters, I have to go wash the smell of Zora off of me. Bye!